Merriman. This particular research titled the modeling synthesizing and validation of panohydroxy hepatite formation for medical application was conducted under supervision of Professor Pali Adhikari with my colleague Tumit Madhushankar. I am Shashika Dharanje. Let's move on to our presentation. In our introduction, basically hydroxyapatite is a basic mineral component of mammalian heart tissue composed of calcium, phosphate, and hydroxide ion. Due to its uh, properties, biological properties like bioactivity, biocompatibility, it is well suited for uh, innovative medical application nowadays like control drug delivery, gene therapy, and broken drug substitution. In our research problem, basically it was how to synthesize PON nano form of hydroxyapatite. It's required by innovative medical application. And then uh, which process parameters are countable for particle size. Uh, then how to manipulate size sensitive process parameters to in order to have nano form. Finally, is it possible to build a mathematical relationship between process sensitive process parameters and particle size indirectly and then our objectives that accordingly to apply classical nucleation theory for model development and understand size sensitive process parameters from the developed model and to design our experimental routine based on the model develop and finally to investigate experimentally the validity of classical nucleation theory Okay, in the significance of the study, purity for biocompatibility is obtained from wet synthesis method and particle size for stereoconductivity was our research problem. Basically, no any mathematical correlation between particle size sensitive process parameters and final particle size. So it was thoroughly studied in this research. In the methodology section, we see uh, basically first step was to develop a kinetic model from classical nucleation theory. Then we did the wet chemical synthesis of hydroxyapatite for varying precursor concentration. And we statistically validated our kinetic model through regression analysis. Then we experimentally validated of the kinetic model. Then we checked the applicability of such a model in nucleation aspects. And we come to our statistical validation part. Um, they are, we built first a kinetic model for nucleation rate through temperature, interfacial tension, and supersaturation. The nucleation rate has increased with increased temperature, decreased interfacial tension, and in increased supersaturation. But we only investigated the supersaturation dependency for nucleation rate. But nucleation rate is not possible to measure directly. So we use induction time, which is inversely proportional to nucleation rate as an indirect measurement for nucleation rate, which is defined as the onset of more significant pH drop. In the regression analysis for the kinetic model developed, we got this regression analysis keeping the temperature and interfacial tension constant for the experiment, varying our supersaturation from concentrations, then we reduced our nonlinear model to a linear model to mathematics. Then K1 and K2 were the regression constant to be determined through our experiment. Our experimental procedure was we first tied calcium hydroxide in the solution, then we added dropwise orthophosphoric acid, then we Put our mixture for 30 minute ultrasonic styling. Then we adjusted the final pH to 10 with ammonium hydroxide. And we most importantly, we recorded the pH variation with time. Finally, we obtained time independent pH constant after 40, 
aid our age in we did our instrumental analysis through same laser particle analysis and FTIR actually in our experiment we synthesized five different samples for five different precursor concentration hereby determined to five different supersaturation then we analytically calculated the ionic strength and supersaturation for these five different samples. As you see, the sample number one has the lowest ionic strength and highest supersaturation. Apparently, sample number five had the highest ionic strength and lowest supersaturation according to the expectation. As our expectation, actually, we did our experiment and got the expected values. That means our induction time has been increased with the lowering supersaturation. The sample number five has been recorded with the highest induction time, with lowest supersaturation, and sample number one opposite. Okay, in the statistical validation part, we did our statistical validation to MATLAB and we get the linear model and determine the constant k1 and k2 with these mentioned regression constant values. Finally, we did our experimental validation as you see in the slide, in the less particle analyzer result. As expected, we caught the narrowest distribution for sample number one and the broadest distribution for sample number five. You see, there are narrower and smaller particles for sample number one. According to the laser particle analyzer, it is confirmed with the same analysis. Sample number five is the largest particle comparatively to the smallest size of sample number one. In the IDAX analysis, we confirmed hydroxyapatite formation based on IDAX analysis. We did two IDAX analysis for one sample just after synthesis and after aging. After synthesis, uh, you see there is a uh, deviation from the characteristic calcium to phosphorus molar ratio, which is 1.7. Finally, our page it has been developed to 1.7 approximately, which is the characteristic calcium to phosphorus mole ratio. In the FTR analysis, uh, we did the FTR analysis uh, and got results for each and every peak expected for phosphate, hydroxide, and water, but uh, unexpectedly we got carbonate it is not a problem for biological hydroxyapatite because naturally occurring one also has this carbonate incorporated in their crystal structure coming from atmospheric carbon dioxide the model applicability we applied our statistically and experimental validated model in determination of interfacial tension and got the interfacial tension as 65 millijoule per square meter which is the realistic value according to the literature and finally we calculated the critical radius as you see the critical radius approach can be used for the explanation of the experimental results because lowest critical radius has been recorded for sample number one and the highest one for sample number five the smallest critical radius could be contributed to the la uh, smaller particle size so in the conclusion section since a direct measurement is not possible for nucleation rate calculation, the induction time was a good measurement. And finally, a nucleation based kinetic model at different supersaturation was successfully established by the linear regression model. And the slide uh, shows uh, what it is. And finally, we realize some relationship, increased supersaturation, increased temperature, and decreased interfacial tension were proven in favor in finer particle size of nanohydroxyapatite. 
and in collaboration of research with the statistically validated model, the critical radius approach was very successful in the explanation of experimental research. Actually, this was published in uh, KDU 14th International Research Conference held this year, that's 14th one. And our future work will be to extend this kinetic model to growth and ripen of pyroxabotide particle. And biologically, we want to do some boundary modeling for derived hydroxabotide uh, with osteoblastic behavior. And these are some references. And finally, I, I would like to acknowledge all the uh, technical staff in our material science and engineering department. Thank you, everyone.